cream cheese are fun, but they don't fly. I don't even know if they float. Hey guys, Wayne Stevenson here, and today we ain't printing banshees. We're gonna print something that flies. So if you guys are subscribed to my channel, you already know that I just received this GTEC A20M 3D printer. What I like about this 3D printer that my other printer doesn't have is this 250 by 250 mil print bed. That means I can print larger things, including the Dyson Cinewhoop. I've been wanting to print that Cinewhoop for a long time, but I haven't been able to, which kind of sparked off my interest in building my own 3D printer. I've got pretty much all the parts for doing that. I just haven't found the time yet. So in the meantime, I am gonna print the Cinewhoop that I've always wanted to on this new 3D printer. Let's get started. And there you have it guys, the Rimsler Dyson Cinewhoop 3 inch frame. This thing is phenomenal, it is beautiful. Made by Rimsler himself. I got links to his YouTube channel as well as his Facebook below. Make sure you pop in there, give him a like, give him a follow, thumbs up. It's amazing, I don't know why everybody's not printing this. It's beautiful. Here's the file here, that's your frame. He's got various GoPro mounts for it. Got lid. And some flight footage we can enjoy. Let's check it out. Here it is, gorgeous. Silky smooth. This is characteristic of good Cinewhoop footage. Now what he's done here is he's taken his GoPro for high def quality video and he's run it through real steady to stabilize this footage and make it silky smooth. And then what he's done is he's taken this into post. So he's got the trickling brook sound, some insect sounds, you can hear the, the rustling of the leaves going by, some wind. It's amazing. It's great footage. I love it. I just want to be there right now. I don't even care about flying there. I, I just like to maybe sit on that rock and enjoy it. You know, back to here. So, I'm just going to be printing the frame itself. I'm not going to be printing um, any GoPro. Oh, I don't own a GoPro. I got action cam, so I'll be uh, strapping it to this baby right here, but I don't have any TPU filament, and that's what you need for the uh, the tops here and the GoPro mounts. Um, you can print the top in PLA, but it is not going to fit because you need it to flex to go around uh, to, to connect to it. So for me, for now, I'm just going to be flying with this once I get it ready, or I'll get my TPU before I get all my parts, in which case I'll have time to print it. All right, let's open up our Pepe Host. That's the software I use. To, uh, I've already downloaded the file put it in a directory, so I'm just going to load this up into my Repetier Host. I think that's how you pronounce it. It looks French, so to me it sounds French when I look at it. Let's open this up. Like I said, I'm not going to do the cover here. I'm just going to do the frame. Beautiful. I love it. Now this, this is designed just to print. There's nothing fancy uh, about the setup. You don't need any support material whatsoever. I love it. This design is amazing. You download the file and you just print it. It doesn't get any simpler than that. I love this. <laughs> it is beautiful. And uh, I couldn't be happier. Let's give that a slice. Take just a moment. And one thing I like to do is uh, when I'm done slicing it, have a quick look at the preview. So now's the time to find out if you got any problems with it. Not after you've already printed it and like, oh shit, I didn't, I didn't realize that. We've all been there. If, you, if you're already doing some 3D printing, you've been there. And you notice things that you would have seen on the preview. So we don't want to waste our filament or our time. Everything looks good. 
I'm going to save this to an SD card. Now I used to just print um, by hooking up to my computer, but since I got my new printer, and I left that downstairs, I don't have room in, in this room here, I've just been printing with an SD card, and you know what I've realized is that I prefer that because my computer isn't held hostage to the print. When I've done long prints, like a 20 hour print, uh, you don't want to touch your computer. Because once you start running low on memory, the printer slows down, the nozzle starts melting into your work and stuff, and it's happened a few times with me. Um, so I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm not messing around with that. You know, or if your computer locks up, you gotta reboot it, and then you gotta start your print over again. Unless you uh, have resume functions on your printer, which I don't have any experience with that except with my new one, but I'm hoping I never have to. With that said, um, like I said, there's nothing more better there's nothing better than just sticking it on an SD file, putting it in to your printer and printing it standalone. Your, your computer's not held hostage. You can do whatever you want on your computer. You can reboot the thing, do updates, whatever. Um, I've had to ignore my computer for 10 hours once before because it started uh, losing resources. So anytime I tried to do anything other than be on my Repete host, uh, the system would bog down, the printer would slow down, so I'd just have to leave it to finish its print. No more. I'm not doing that anymore. Anyhow, let's go downstairs and finish this, uh, or get started on this print. For this print, I'm going to use both extruders. I'm going to use the gradient mixer settings so I can get a nice mixture of two colors. However, I'm going to get rid of this white and I'm going to throw in some AMZ 3D uh, black filament and use that with this green sun loo. Okay, I'm just going to move my axis up here. Make it a little easier to get at. Also going to have to heat up the nozzle so I can remove all right we're going to try set up this gradient I've, uh, I've never used the mixer before except to switch filaments Right there with a the mix if I wanted to switch from one to the other or a combination I'd use that but I want to do a gradient so I'm going to select gradient gradient mix 100% uh, the first color and then at 100% on the other doing a full gradient and I'm going to go oops so about a 31 mil um, high file so let's just go like this because I think that will give me oh, about a one mil black tip on the top so let's try that and see how well this does there we go Well, here we are, about two hours into the print, and it is clear that I haven't really nailed down this uh, gradient. Right off the bat, she started uh, mixing instead of what I thought I had. But, we'll find out. Got a long ways to go, still six hours left to print. 
Okay, well that is just messed up. Look at that. So it's now starting the gradient where I wanted it to with the black. So this will be an interesting uh, print. See that gradient now is at 91 and 9%. Okay, this is getting even weirder. So over here it's fully black. And anything on this side, you can see the green. I clearly don't know what I'm doing, but I like it. I like it, but ew, it's not what I wanted. So uh, I'm gonna have to make myself another one. Well, the plot thickens. Cause this gradient it's getting even more and more confusing. Okay, welcome back. So, I've been looking more and more at this print here and I think I'm getting it figured out. I'm thinking the stuff on the left hand side uh, is getting printed black and the stuff on the right hand side's printing green. Now I still don't know why it was starting the uh, gradient earlier in the print, but what I can tell you is that it appears that because the uh, black is getting mixed on the left hand side of the uh, nozzle and the green's coming in on the right hand side and because the walls are so thin um, I'm thinking that's where the color difference comes in why we're getting black on one side and more green on the other so you can see the gradient there so as I said for some reason uh, it started out mixing and then uh, as you get up to where I originally want the gradient to start, the gradient starts. I was assuming that the bottom part would be black as well. Well, it's not. Now we go over here, you can kind of see the, uh, the left hand side has a lot more black than the right hand side. And if you uh, view it, from this side, completely black. There's really no green showing. Now if you look on the inside, again, completely black, completely black, completely black. We move over on this side, everything on the right hand side is showing the gradient as we expect it to be. I'm assuming that's normal for uh, a mixing nozzle. There might be no way around that. Well, here we are, five hours and 40 minutes in. It's looking slick, not as bright as I'd uh, expect over on this side. But this gradient isn't working at all. It's supposed to be an 80-20 uh, mix pretty much right now. Not seeing it, but it will be an interesting print nonetheless. Here we are, 20 minutes away from 7 hours. Well it's, uh, it's definitely an interesting gradient. Unique, absolutely. Nothing like it in the world. I am an artist, no? Behold my creation! You like? <laughs> FPV style! Whoa! Dyson Cinewoop, you my best friend! Well, here we are. Seven hours and 46 minutes, sun's going down on us. The uh, seven hour and 20 minute estimated print time from Cura was a little under uh, estimated. But with that said, that's fine. Because we're coming up. Well, right now I can tell you, 80, uh, 82% complete on the print. 
We're at 96% mix right now, 95% mix, so we are almost done. Gradient should finish up at 30 mils, I believe, and we are now at 28 and a half, so should be hitting full green here soon. Very soon. But with that said, we probably got at least another hour, I'm thinking, print time. I haven't done a long one like this in a while. I am definitely happy that this, uh, this A20M that I have just gotten is uh, functioning flawlessly, I would say. Loving it. Other than, of course, the mix, but it's kind of a cool gradient. Very cool. A lot more black on the side there, though, as we discussed. Wonder if I'll be able to get that sorted out. I think next time I do it, I won't bother, uh... Well, I still like the black, like the dark black on the bottom. It's kind of what I had envisioned. Except for that green right at the bottom. Well... Well, we're coming up on eight and a half hours. All right, eight hours, 50 minutes. Looking beautiful, very beautiful. All right, nine hours and eight minutes in, we've hit the first layer past the gradient. So everything here on out should be 100% green. Pretty slick too. I'm enjoying this. Even on this side. Well this side now I'm thinking is just like a mess. This side here. Beauty. Well, nine hours, 39 minutes. So much for a little over seven hours. Cura, you lied. Well, I'm not gonna wait up all night for this. I am going to bed course for you see you momentarily morning lovelies well it's morning prints complete let's see if we can take that off the bed I know we had some issues with the uh, Z height the other day let's first take a quick look Pretty slick, I like it. Well, that was a 10 hour, seven minute print. So much for seven hours. Damn worth it though. Once I get that baby up in the air, let's see how easy it's gonna be to remove. Oh, it's coming. Oh, one's coming. There we go. Oh yeah, nice. Clear up some of that string in there. Don't want that getting in the motors. Man, this is, uh, this is a beautiful, and it's solid. Like, I can't see having any problems flying that baby. Man, that printer's loud. Not used to having, uh, not used to having such a loud printer. But there is a lot of cooling in it, so internally mind you I'm gonna have to hit this with a heat gun I think it is quite stringy this is gonna be fun to fly if you're interested in printing one yourself got the thingiverse link down below and make sure you subscribe because uh, in a few days I'm gonna be uh, building with this once I get some uh, some parts put together for it Guys, I hope you liked this video. Like and subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell, because as soon as I build this 3D printed Cinewhoop, you'll be notified when I upload it. Thanks for watching. Take care.